You enjoying this weird episode, John? Hi, I'm Phil. Hi, I'm Phil's mom. My mom's here, and uh, she just wants to say hi. That's it. Hi. That's it. Okay, that's it. Thanks, mom. Tonight on the show, we're gonna make sandwiches. It's kind of a, I'm kind of winging it. It's a, it's a kind of a something from nothing kind of night where I have a lot of leftovers and I'm gonna organize the leftovers into a new meal. That's right, John, you're enjoying my leftovers. Yeah. Okay, so tonight we're gonna make something out of this loaf of bread. It's a whole grain bread. It is just a little bit stale. And uh, we're gonna have bacon tonight, smoked bacon. So the first step tonight is we're gonna get that bacon going. We are preheating the oven to 400 degrees. I like to bake bacon on a rack, which allows the air to circulate. It allows the bacon to both crisp up, but also it allows some of the excess fat to drop away from the bacon. So you don't have to eat it. And it's a little bit healthier. And to me that tastes a little bit better. Now let me show you the crazy technology that the Kroger Corporation has developed. I don't think I've featured this before. Parchment pre-cut sheets. Reusable up to three times. I've never tried reusing it yet. Now look at this. Wow. <laughs> That's actually very nice. Cutting parchment paper is a real pain in the Watukas. That's a regional term for the booty. Here's that bacon. So I like to spread the bacon out like so. This is a very exciting part. Here's my bacon. It didn't quite fit perfectly, but bacon, unlike a ballpark hot dog, shrinks when you cook it. So it'll be fine. We'll just adjust it a little bit. And honestly, that's gonna take a little bit of time. It usually takes me about half an hour, sometimes longer. So uh, we're gonna go do other things, including film a garden update, which we will proceed to now. All right, back to our normally scheduled cookery. I got this loaf of bread. I said this loaf of bread is a little stale and a little might be, might be generous. So I'm sawing some slices of bread. I'm gonna slice the whole thing up. And I would like, you know, uh, only a moderate thickness because when you crisp up bread or you toast it, you know, you don't want it to be too thick because it'll be hard to eat. But really, like I was mentioning, we're gonna make a, a bits and bobs kind of kind of dinner. Okay, so spreadable butter. Is it gourmet? No. Uh, is it very useful for this type of application? Yes. Particularly if you did not like plan ahead with some room temperature butter, you know, just use some spreadable butter. So here I am buttering the bread. Okay, so we got our toasty toast. And I think I'm gonna make about half of this garlic bread. Everyone likes garlic bread. So this is garlic that I grew. And assuming that the garlic, the, the garlic, the garden update, Comes out sometime soon. You can see me pick this from the curing, pulled out of my garage. But look at these beautiful, fresh cloves. Garlic. And one of the most satisfying things about growing your own garlic is the completely epic crunch that you get when you smash it. There's nothing like it. It's so satisfying. Like I'm not a ASMR kind of guy, but it's like, it feels really good when you crunch that garlic. <laughs> I'm just gonna do the two. A lot of times homegrown garlic is very, very spicy. And that should be plenty for our purposes today. All right, you ready for that ASMR moment? Oh yes, quite nice. So we're gonna mince that up and uh, you know, the size of your garlic is up to you. You know, if you wanna put this in a press, it's fine. You wanted to like blend it into butter, that would also be nice. So we are going to just add a little bit of this. And by a little bit, I mean a lot of it. To some of these breads. Painting it across the top in hopes that it spreads out a bit, um, but it's not really spreading out that much. So, you know, just do your best. And uh, we will go ahead and salt all of these. I think that'll taste nice. This is pink Himalayan salt that I've got in a grinder. I don't really think it tastes too different, but it is fancy, and fancy is fun. Fancy is fun. I'll go ahead and pop that in the oven. The oven's at 400 degrees. Here's our bacon. I have no idea how long it's been. So you can see we're getting a little bit of uh, scorching on the outside, so that's okay. And it really shrunk up a bit. So I'm gonna flip it over. And I'm gonna only let this go for a, a very brief time more. This is as close to the doneness that I like. So just like a minute or two more, and this bacon will let it rest. 
And while that's going, we can prep some of our toppings. So one of the things we'll be enjoying today is some guacamole that my mom made. And it's a, it's a very like a minimalist guac. So not too many fancy ingredients. I haven't had a chance to try this. Um, but part of why this is uh, particularly special is that my mom and dad grew the avocados that this is made out of, except for one. There's like one store bought in there because I had that hanging around. She brought some from her from her tree in Florida. Well, it tastes really good. She was worried that she put too much lime juice in it, but I think it, it's just right. I think mama knew what she was doing. Other things we're gonna enjoy today are some cheese. And I have a leftover steak that I grilled. I'm going to thinly very thinly slice this leftover steak. And uh, I can already anticipate like someone eye rolling that this show, this episode, this YouTube video is like, how to heat up leftover steak and eat it on toast. But I, I think this is useful. Like this, um, this is how like a lot of people eat in regular terms when we're not curating every single moment of our lives. So like just take the, take the inspiration and I don't, I don't need you. I don't need your feedback. I won't read it anyways. I'm just kidding. I will read it, but I won't consider it. I also have some caramelized onions in there. And I think I'm going to just briefly saute these. Almost forgot about that bacon, but it's definitely time for it to come out. And uh, you ready for this pro gamer move? John, you ready for it? Mm -hmm. Check out this pro gamer move. Well, the only problem with that pro gamer move is that uh, now you got a greasy pan or drippy pan. Now I got the bacon grease, so I'm going to I'm gonna saute the steak in the bacon grease. Whoa! We can pop our caramelized onions in there. Oh, there's a bonus piece. Actually, I think that's gristle. <laughs> and while we're at it, why don't we do some slices of garlic with the beef? I think that might be nice. I don't know why I rinsed that. So you know that beef's only gonna, it's only gonna take a second to heat up. So the garlic should cook in just about the same time. And I'm gonna slice some tomato. I think I'm gonna use this old old plum, which is very ripe. I do some thin slices like so. All right, and some tomato. And what else can we do? We can do other garnishes. I use a little spinach and uh, got some pickles I made. And actually, as a as an experiment, I have some roasted tomatillo salsa that I made about a week ago. And I thought it would be fun to see if I can blend that with some mayonnaise. It's kind of like a, a spread for some of this. So let's see how that goes. I. This is, Highly experimental. I don't really want to dunk mayo into the, the tomatillos. Maybe I'll just pour it. Yeah, let's give it a taste. It's good. I actually think it's gonna be really nice. All right, this is heating up too fast. Got some old iceberg lettuce here. Kind of a trend in my house. And we will slice that super thin. Actually, I think I'm gonna go ahead and heat up the steak and garlic. Uh, this steak is not tender uh, by any means. So, you know, even eating it in its cold form, uh, you know, it's, it's, I sliced it super thin, and that was intentional because it's just, you know, it's kind of a tough steak. That's no problem. Hit that with some pepper. We'll let that sizzle away. And I'll actually probably turn the heat off here shortly. Kind of let it do its thing. I'm gonna move my dog. I'm gonna move the garlic right to the top and see if that cooks a little faster. I just kind of want it to crisp up a bit. So here's our bacon, fully cooked, and I just want to show you the texture. So I can pull it apart, and it has it has a chew to it that is not chewy, but it's not crispy, it's not, um, it's not crunchy, it's a bit crisp, and it's not floppy. That's how I like my bacon. Super good. Super, super good. We're gonna move our beef to the side. I'm gonna throw the rest of this spinach in here, which I should have done when the pan was a little hotter. I'll go ahead and turn it back on. But this will shrink into nothing, and we'll throw it on some toast. It'll be nice. Looks like our garlic did cook, but, uh, you know, Spinach is good for you. And when it's cooked in beef and bacon fat, who, who can complain about that? Only dummies. All right, so what I'm going for um, here is I have some pickled cucumbers, but I also pickled some of our garden scapes, garlic scapes rather. You can like not keep those words straight today. So this is uh, the stem of the flower of garlic. And I thought that the garlic flavor will complement the other garlic flavors we're featuring today, <laughs> but it also will make a nice garnish. So I'm gonna mince those for a garnish today. Almost gonna treat it like a chive. Okay, so like I said, the spinach is gone. Ta-da! Turn that pan right back off. All right, so the choice is yours. If you want to melt some cheese on this bread, I think it might taste nice. We have not crisped up yet. I'm gonna turn the oven up a little bit to 450. Uh, so I have some picante provolone. It's from Brett. Brett made some uh, Philadelphia roast pork sandwiches when he visited, which were awesome. We got all this provolone left. So let's make some of these cheesy. 
Well, I think a, a half slice will do us. Oh yeah, look at that. What if we just made them all cheese? All right, it's a pausing point, which means it's time for a bacon snack. Okay, so from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna gussy up our toasts. As you can see, I didn't cheese them all, but I thought they looked nice, it was bubbling. So I'm gonna start with the probably more intuitive or familiar, which is gonna be kind of like a bacon and avocado topping. Now this is hot, so you know, like the guacamole is gonna heat up a little bit. You know, it might be a little weird, but I don't know. I've never done this before, I'm just making it up. And remember, this is garlic and this is not garlic. So I'm gonna give people choices. You can see I'm just spooning this as a layer over the cheese. And our next stop will be the bacon. Now, you have a critical choice to make as a human being, which is do you want to place a full piece of bacon on this or not? I think it looks beautiful when you do that, especially if it's a piece of bacon that is shaped like the piece of bread. That looks quite nice. However, this will be more difficult to eat. So when someone eats this piece of toast, they're gonna have to chew this. So you could crumble the bacon or even slice it, chop it up. But because I do care about aesthetics a bit, I'm just gonna place the full bacon on because I think it looks great. And I'm specifically looking for pieces of bacon that kind of match the toast. And hey, that pan is quite hot. Don't touch the pan. Now, it is up to you how you want to proceed from here, but something I think would taste very nice would be just a little bit of mustard or mayonnaise. Choice is yours. And because you just placed your, um, your bacon onto the sticky part of the sammy, we need something that can kind of glue additional things on. So you can see here, I'm gonna top this with some slices of tomato, which are super thin and should not be distracting, particularly if you are sensitive about tomato texture. And we're gonna finish this with a little pickled garlic scape topping. And if you if you wanted to, you could even do like a little bit of lettuce, but uh, I don't think that's necessary today. And to give our uh, diners a little bit of uh, variety, maybe we'll do just a little bit of mayonnaise on some. You know, maybe you've got a diner who doesn't like mustard, which of course you could ask them politely but firmly to leave, and that'll be okay. And for these guys, we'll just do like a single tomato. And maybe finish with some cracked black pepper. Nice. All right, for our others, today we've got our tomatillo mayo, which we'll spread over the cheese or the nothing. But here, we'll place some slices of our reheated beef steak, and then we will use our spinach as a topping here, just a little bit. And what you'll see is that with just a loaf of stale bread and a pack of bacon and some random stuff from my fridge, we made a pretty nice meal. I didn't use the lettuce and that's fine. Well, I'll just leave that for somebody if they want it. But that's it. That's our crostini open face sandwich leftover surprise. We basically made like a fancy BLT over here. We made kind of like a steak and spinach tomatillo thing over here. I think it'll be very nice. All right, let's try our steak and spinach first. Yo, that's it. That's really good. This has like um, like an old school, like think like 60s, 70s, like steakhouse meal, kind of like all thrown together. It has like that really savory, beefy juiciness. The tomatillo is very mellow, actually, in the overall flavor combination. Toast is crunchy, it's ultra garlicky. Oh, I think you're really gonna like that, John. I think it's better than expected. Now this one, I know it's gonna be good. <laughs> and no question in my mind. Yeah, that's like, that's like the BLT of a lifetime. Oh shit. Okay, so, confirmation on the bacon. Look, I'm chewing, can't cut it. <laughs> I gotta turn around. <laughs> yeah, maybe chop your bacon. That's, that's hard to eat, but it's really, really tasty. I think that's super good. I'm excited to eat this for dinner. I think we made something really nice out of, there's a bunch of leftover stuff. So, that's how you do it. Hopefully my mom enjoys this. I'll let you know in the comments below or something. We'll see you next time on PGC. That's how you do it. God bless you and your family. And if you like what we're doing and it makes you happy, channel that happiness and go do something nice for somebody else. Not me, just somebody else. And that will be nice. And then you will feel good again if you did something nice for somebody else. See you next time.